Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Bank Shop Breakdown. We're going to go over four college basketball games for Friday, January 13th, 2023. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your college basketball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, you can always find those at the Premium Picks tab at PickDogs.com. Alrighty, let's get into it. Here are the games for Friday in college basketball. First up, it's Eastern Michigan and Akron. This one's 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPNU. I think this sets up to be a nice blowout win for Akron at home here. Eastern Michigan's defense is not good enough for this game, in my opinion. 349th in adjusted defensive efficiency. Akron brought back Xavier Castaneda from injury. Last time out, he played against Bowling Green, put up 16 points in that game. One of the better scorers in the MAC this season. You already got a guy like Enrique Freeman who's putting up a double-double almost every night. 21 points last time out at 16 rebounds as well. And I just think that Akron is just too much defensively also. You know, although I think Akron's going to score plenty of points in this game, you look at the Akron defense, I think it's one of the better defenses in the MAC, in the MAC conference this year. So, yes, Eastern Michigan's led by a star player in Imani Bates who can score plenty of points himself, but the entire roster is not where it needs to be. They ranked 230th in adjusted offensive efficiency, not a very good shooting team as a team, and I think they struggle here in a true road spot. Give me Akron land the points in this one. Next up, we see Michigan State taking on Illinois. This one's going to be 9 o'clock Eastern on Fox Sports 1. You know, Michigan State's on a seven-game win streak, but none of those wins against top 50 Ken Palm opponents. And, you know, you look at the schedule that Michigan State played at the beginning of the season. We give them a lot of credit for playing such a tough non-conference schedule. But then you look at the wins that they pulled off. Yes, they beat Kentucky, Villanova, and Oregon. But those were teams that really we thought were going to be a lot better on paper than they actually are this season. It's been a big down year for Kentucky and Villanova, as well as Oregon. So not really as impressive victories as we thought. They lost games to Gonzaga, Alabama, Notre Dame. And, you know, I do think that Illinois is just so tough to beat at home. A very good rebounding team, very good shooting team. They're just about a balanced team on both sides of the ball. Very good defensively. I think very underrated right now. Defensively, they force a ton of turnovers. I think this, this uh, Illinois team is just too tough to beat in this spot for Michigan State. I know they're on that seven-game win streak, but I think it comes to an end in this one. Give me Illinois laying the points. I like the Illini in this one. Next up, we see VCU and Dayton. This one's going to be 9 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. I love watching these teams play against each other because they're so good defensively, but really for different reasons. You know, VCU is very aggressive defensively. They always like to force a ton of turnovers. This season, they're ranked sixth in the country in turnover percentage on defense. Last year, they were ranked fourth. The year before, they were ranked ninth. So always around the top 10, VCU is under Mike Rhodes in that statistic. But on the other side, Dayton, although they're a very good defensive team as well, they don't really look to be too aggressive defensively. Right now, they're ranked 313th in turnover percentage on defense. Last year, 255th. Their real big thing is to force a lot of tough shots. So VCU's forcing tough decisions and some tough shots as well. And Dayton is looking to play a little bit more conservative defensively and force some tough you know, long three-point jumpers. And I just don't think VCU's offense is designed that well to beat that. And I say the same thing for Dayton. You know, This is a team that turns the ball over quite a bit. But I do think Dayton has a huge advantage in on both the offensive and defensive glass. And being the home team here, the, also the better shooting team, I do think Dayton is going to be the team that wins this game and covers the number in the end. You look at VCU, 224th in offensive rebounding, 293rd in defensive. Dayton top 80, both offensively and defensively, on the boards. I think we're going to see a lot of second chance opportunities, a lot of trips to the free throw line. Because like I said, although VCU is aggressive defensively and they force those turnovers, they can certainly take a lot of fouls defensively. So Dayton should be able to live at the free throw line and inside the bucket, you know, getting a lot of second chance opportunities. I think that's good enough for Dayton to win this game. Add to the fact that VCU is going to be taking a lot of tough three-point jumpers that I don't think that this Rams team is designed to do very well. Uh, give me Dayton in this spot. I think this matchup benefits the Flyers a little bit more. Next up, we go back to the Big Ten Conference as Nebraska takes on Purdue. This one's going to be 7 o'clock Eastern, Big Ten Network. You know, these two teams played in a great game back on December 10th. It was an overtime game, 65-62. Purdue won that game. They failed to cover the number in that one, though. And you know, Nebraska played very well defensively. They really uh, were playing well because of that home crowd. It was a basically sold-out crowd for Nebraska. Great game to watch. But in this spot, Nebraska in a true road game. That offense, I just don't think, is going to be able to travel. And even the defense, I worry about a little bit in this game as well. Nebraska, one of the worst shooting teams in the Big Ten this season, both from the three-point line and the free-throw line. 
And, you know, they turned the ball over quite a bit as well. Purdue, a very good rebounding team, a very good shooting team, led by one of the best players in the country in Zach Eady. They're on a two-game win streak, and they won two games against some tough teams in road games. You won a true road game over Ohio State. You won a semi-road game over Penn State by 13 points, covering the number in that one. Uh, I just like Purdue's chances to earn a much more convincing win against Nebraska this time around than the first game. So give me Purdue laying the points at home. And that's it. Those are the games for Friday in college basketball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to put your college basketball picks in the comment section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.